This short video outlines the process of installing the Optimizer 2 on various Mitsubishi substation circuit breakers. The types shown here include the 200 SFMT40 HE, the 120 SFMT40, and the 70 SFMT32F. Why add the Optimizer 2 to a new circuit breaker? Today's breakers are so good that only a few measured parameters are needed to gauge their health. Using forecast info, gas refills can be planned when convenient and least costly. Gas emissions from leaking equipment can be recorded remotely and kept separate from handling losses. By assessing gas parameters remotely, the labor of a field inspection will be reduced. Begin by looking at the control cabinet. Look for a space that is easy to get to, easy to neatly run wires to, and close to the terminal block that terminates the bushing CT circuits. Preferably the optimizer 2 should be powered by station battery voltage, so that wiring should be accessible also. Some like to see the display through the cabinet window. This is often possible, but check to be sure there is clearance so the cabinet door will close before you drill. The ideal way to connect the optimizer to aux A and aux B timing inputs is to connect them in parallel with the trip coil and the green light, respectively. This gives the best information and will include trip time, travel time and clearing time, all key indicators of mechanism health. With some modern protective relay schemes, trip coil monitoring is included. This protective relay function uses a very high impedance connection, which can be rendered useless if the optimizer 2 is connected across the trip coil, even though the impedance of the optimizer 2 is very high also. In this case, a separate trip output can be run from the protective relay that mimics the primary trip output. It should also operate when either trip circuit operates, if there are two. This output should be wetted with DC and a resistor placed in parallel with the optimizer aux A input to minimize electrical noise. The simplest connection for the aux B input is directly in parallel with the green light. The optimizer 2 calculates primary current values from measurements on the secondary side. This makes it important to know the ratio of the bushing CT circuit you are connecting the pickup coils to. This value is entered into the optimizer 2 as part of the setup process. The third step is to decide how you will connect the gas density sensor to the plumbing of the breaker. The sensor is always 3 8 inch British standard parallel pipe thread. Typical connections available on Mitsubishi breakers are either 7 16 inch SAE or 3 8 inch British, like the sensor is. Fittings to adapt the sizes are available from Jobbers, McMaster, or convenient online vendors. When needed, Dow 111 silicone sealant is recommended for threads. Schedule the outage in advance so things go smoothly. If the crew shows up prepared with all the parts, installation generally takes less than two hours. Depending on the vintage and the model of the circuit breaker, specific gas connections vary. If you give Mitsubishi the breaker serial number, they can tell you exactly what the options and thread sizes are in advance. Usually the connections to the block are 7 16 inch SAE, requiring a neoprene O-ring and silicone sealant. Mounting the optimizer too is easy. Often it is possible to place it behind the window so it can be seen with the door closed. Field crews like this. When drilling, be careful not to nick wires that might be hidden behind the panel. Also, 
clean up the metal bits before you make gas connections to prevent impurities from getting into the gas system. On this model, a 3 8 inch female elbow and 3 8 to 7 16 male adapter was used to connect the density sensor. For this breaker, a spare valved connection was available. The, the valve had a 3 8 inch male end, so a 3 8 female coupling was used to connect the sensor. Here, a gas sniffing tool was used to detect leaks after the gas was turned on. On this model, the valve block had a spare accessory port with a 7 16 inch SAE female connection. Crews had limited access to plumbing supplies, so this hookup was used. A hydraulic fitting went from 7 16 to 1 quarter inch NPT, then another adapter to get to 3 8 then another to 3 8 inch British parallel. The optimizer 2 can be mounted securely on two bolts. Here there was space under the lights. This was an ideal location as it put it behind the window. Here is a finished installation showing sensor and optimizer 2. An ethernet to fiber converter box connected to a VPN at the utility. Sideways installation is cool too. Mitsubishi hides the trip coil terminal block above the mechanism. Check the prints to identify the terminals. Easy access to the green light makes it perfect to get at the 52B circuit. Identify the bushing CT circuits and place the current pickup coils around those conductors. This CT ratio, referred to 1, is programmed into the optimizer 2 when you set it up. Programming is most easily done at the office before you take it to the field. The optimizer 2 ships from the factory with a default IP address. Use an Ethernet cable to log into the box using a web browser. Setup is easy. Most parameters are selected from pull down menus. This part of the screen selects timing parameters that measured times are compared to for alarm purposes. These values shown are common to these Mitsubishi types. This part of the screen sets up the SF6 density parameters. Here, the warning and lockout limits for SF6 gas are entered along with the sensor type. Digital true density sensors are standard with the optimizer 2, but temperature compensated pressure sensors giving a 4 to 20 milliamp analog signal may also be used. The optimizer 2 offers many benefits. It will totalize the lifetime use of SF6, making EPA reporting compliance easy. It will obviate the need for offline circuit breaker testing. First trip information will show any degradation in performance over time. And it migrates the SF6 system integrity function toward the active and predictive smart grid realm. Thank you. If you have questions or need more information, please contact INCON Power Reliability Systems at 800-872-3455.